Woohoo. Okay. Thanks, Charlene. Um, okay, so I'm going to talk to you the, this evening about how to create virtual performances. Um, so I'm going to start in a little PowerPoint. Um, so um, my name is Theodora Byrne. I'm a musician, um, arranger, choir director, community music facilitator, um, lecturer, all these kinds of things, all different sorts of things. Um, over the last year, and a bit since March 2020, um, since the pandemic started, I have been involved in, I think I counted today, 27 virtual performances. So between um, bands, choirs, that kind of thing. Um, so um, there's a couple of different steps to this. I'm going to talk about a few different processes. Um, I'm going to talk about dealing with your audio, um, dealing with your video, and then also in kind of talk a little bit about kind of the admin end of things. So how you go about organizing a project like this and any of the kind of administrative bits that you need to know. So very first thing, you wanna create a virtual performance. That's great, excellent. And um, you're gonna to wanna to record your video first. So recording your little bit. So you might be one of however many people, maybe you're one of four people, maybe you're one of 40 people. Um, either way, you have to record your contribution your little frame of the video um, so you're going to need to do this you're going to need two devices and a set of headphones um, so i would advise when it comes so my two devices are my phone and my laptop um, i prefer the quality of the video on my phone so personally i use my phone to record video and then i use my laptop with headphones connected to it to um, listen to the guide track or the click track or the instrumental track or whatever it is that I'm listening to. Um, so attach your headphones to one device uh, and play the backing track or the guide track or whatever it is from that device. So I would, in that instance, attach my headphones to my laptop and I would play my backing track or my guide track on that. And I would then set up my phone either on a, um, a tripod or just leaning up against something. Um, so you're you're using your one device, so my laptop for the track, and then I'm using my second device, which would be my phone, for capturing my video and also my audio in some instances. Um, so capture your image and isolated vocal or sound from the second device. Um, so yeah, it says there, I usually play the track from my laptop and record audio and video on my phone. Um, use whichever device has better picture and sound to record yourself, basically. I had a rubbish laptop for quite a while, so that's why I use my phone. Um, okay, so then you have recorded your video, so you singing or you playing your instrument or whatever it is. You recorded it on your phone, for example, then you have to get it onto your computer. So I use Google Drive, um, I use Gmail, so I have access to all of the Google apps. So I download the Google Drive app onto my phone and sign in. So that way, when I have recorded my video on my phone, I just hit the share function and then I can upload my video directly from WhatsApp or my gallery to Google Drive. And then I can access Google Drive on my laptop and I can download it from Google Drive and then I have it um, on my laptop. So hopefully that all makes sense. So that's recording your video using your two devices, one for the track, one for recording and getting it onto your computer so you can edit it. Okay, before we go any further, I need to um, talk about default settings. Default settings, if you don't kind of put a little bit of provision in place, can really complicate matters. And um, if you don't have your settings right before you start recording, you're in for a world of pain. You don't want to get, you know, you don't, don't want to find yourself there, trust me. Um, it really kind of put a bit of a spanner, a spanner in the works in some of the early projects that I was involved in. Um, if you have people on different default settings, things will be out of time, things will sound like they're in different keys, and you're going to have a really, really hard time syncing them up. Um, so it's really worth noting some of the default settings and making sure that everyone um, in, involved in your project is aware of them. These are default settings, so a lot of them are going to be default as standard. Most of the time, you won't have to 
you know, people won't have to go in and change settings or anything like that. They will be the default. Um, so there are two things that you want to take note of, audio sample rates and video frame rates. So audio sample rates first. Um, the default sample rate on a phone is 44.1 hertz. This can't be changed, which is great. Um, because that means that if everyone is recording on their phone, for example, my um, community choir playlist, everyone is just recording their video and audio on their phone. So I don't have to say, everybody go in and check your default sample rates, just because I know that everyone's recording on their phone. They're all amateur singers. And um, so nobody is using recording software or anything like that. Just everyone's recording on their phone so that I know that everyone as standard is going to be 44.1. If you were dealing with, um, professional musicians, semi-professional musicians, that kind of thing. Um, some people might be using DAW, which is digital audio workstation. So recording software like Pro Tools, Logic, Ableton, that kind of thing. Um, in those um, digital audio workstations, you can change the um, audio sample rate. So it can be 44.1 or it can be 48. Um, so you need to specify if you are working with anyone who might be using a digital audio workstation, you need to specify to use 44.1 as the audio sample rate. Um, if some of the tracks are in 44.1 and some are in 48, um, they will sound out of key and will be out of sync. And it's really, really hard to get around that. You're just gonna have to go back and get people to record again, which is a nightmare. Um, so just specify if people are recording, recording in a DAW that they need to record at 44.1. Um, if someone is using like Pro Tools first or GarageBand or some of the the, the free um, or kind of trial versions of DAWs, that kind of thing, sometimes 44.1 is the only option that they have. So sometimes um, you won't even have the option of using 48. Uh, so I would say as standard, unless there is a, you have a very specific personal reason for not uh, using 44.1, I would say 44.1 is going to be the safest for everyone. Um, when it comes to video frame rates, I would go with 30 frames per second. Again, this is the default frame rate on an iPhone and probably lots of other phones. Um, if you do have videos that have different frame rates in your project, they will, once again, they'll just appear out of time and it can be a total pain. Um, some phones and fancy cameras, you can change the frame rates. Um, but for projects where most people will just be recording on their phone, it's best to use 30 frames per second. So again, if you have a project where some people are going to be using just their phones, some people are going to be using DAWs, some people are going to be using blah, 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 blah. It's usually just best to set a default of 30 frames per second. That's going to be the, def the default on most phones. Um, again, it's a good idea to remind everyone to use this frame rate. I have had projects where like, you know, been working with 30 people and 29 people just used their phones and it was fine. And then one person wanted to use, you know, their nice new digital camera and just didn't check and their frame rate was 23 frames per second or something like that and they're out of time um, so I know that this stuff is confusing and even I don't know a whole lot about it um, but I do know that trying to edit when you have different frame rates and audio sample rates is a nightmare um, so it's something worth noting again um, later <clears throat> later in the presentation I'll show you kind of the information that I give to all the participants of one of these kinds of projects and I'll show you how I talk about defaults because I know that it can be the kind of thing that some people are like um, so I don't want to freak anyone out but I would like to help you skip over that um, that phase that I had of being like why is this one person playing out of time and in a different key um, it's just a it's a default setting uh, issue and it's pain um, okay <clears throat> so ripping an audio from a video online so if for example <clears throat> pardon me, um, if someone has sent you or you have your own um, video from your phone and you are just using the video and audio from your phone and you want to deal with the audio and the video separately, if you go to this website, audioextractor.net, um, that will allow you to disconnect the audio and the video. So you upload the video to the site and it allows you to download the audio as an MP3. You can set it as an MP3 or a WAV or whatever you like. Um, I like the MP3 just because it's small and manageable. But again, that's just if you want to separate them out in some DAWs, like I generally use Logic for these problems. If you just pull a video into Logic, um, it will give you the option of just opening the audio. But uh, some DAWs don't allow you to do that. So it's worth noting. 
Um, okay, <clears throat> so digital audio workstations or DAWs are for editing audio. So this is uh, recording software. If you have worked with a DAW before, you might have one that you like. Um, like I said, I personally like Logic. I've also used GarageBand. That sounds GarageBand. Uh, that should be GarageBand. I've used a little bit of Pro Tools, but I, I Pro Tools and I are not friends. Um, but there are loads of different kinds. Um, so there is just a bunch there. Um, all of these have different pros or cons. Some are free, some are really expensive, some are Apple only products, some work on any kind of computer. Um, have a look at them, you know, look at reviews online, look at YouTube videos, see what you like the look of. I feel like generally most people, you know, like, like I said, I look at logic and I'm like, ah, oh, looks beautiful. It's great, totally makes sense. Then I look at Pro Tools and it just looks like a nightmare to me. <clears throat> um, so some of these I've used, Soundtrap I've used, Logic Pro, GarageBand, Pro Tools, Ableton, um, Audacity, a little bit of Reaper. I haven't used Band Labs, Fruity Loops, Cubase or Adobe Audition, but they all at the end of the day fundamentally do the same thing. They all have the same basic functionality. Some of them might just might just look a certain way, look a different way. Um, so just have a look, have a look on YouTube, read some reviews, see which one kind of calls out to you. Um, today, for the purpose of demonstration, we're going to use Soundtrap. I think Soundtrap is great if you haven't used a DAW before. Um, it's free, uh, so you just register for it with your email address. And also, you don't have to download anything, so it's a browser uh, DAW. So you just open it in Google Chrome or Firefox or whatever your um, browser of choice is. So you, it's not a big app that you have to download. Um, and update that kind of thing. It just exists online. So it's really great, you know, if you were working on something at home, whatever, and then you were over at someone else's house and you wanted to access your project, you can just go onto their laptop and sign into your Soundtrap and your, all your work will be there. So it's really great. It's very, very easy to use. It's owned by Spotify. So that might turn some people off, um, but it's very, very easy to use. Um, it's very basic. It looks quite simple, I think. So that's what I'm going to use today. So <clears throat> just for you to have, um, I've got some helpful videos for using Soundtrap. So kind of the basics, getting started, importing audio, some audio editing, um, audio effects, mixing vocals. These are just videos that I found on YouTube that are helpful, that will kind of get you started. Um, and then here's kind of similar thing in some of the other DAWs. So a bit of, you know, these are like, getting you started in Logic Pro, everything you need to know, that kind of thing. Um, basics of vocal EQ, that kind of thing. So just very, very simple, straightforward starting information. Th these might be videos that you can check out to figure out what kind of DAW you like the look of. Um, okay, so with that said, let's jump into editing some audio. Oh, sorry. Bear with me. Um, okay, I'm going to drop us into Soundtrap. I will show you how Soundtrap works. Okay, we'll come back to this. Okay, so this is Soundtrap. When you uh, go into Soundtrap, it looks like this. You've registered and you've logged in. So this is what it looks like. You can see me there. I'm a free user. So everything that um, we look at today will be available to you if you just sign up uh, regular. So um, I'm going to enter the studio. So this is going to bring us into the studio working space. <clears throat> um, let's discard. So I'm going to work on music. So this is our studio space. This is our digital audio workstation space. So you can see down the bottom, you have your stop, record, play, those kind of things, your master volume. Here you have some options that are grayed out that you can click on. Um, up here you have your little menu. And on the left here, you have new track. So let's call this, here comes the sun. So some members of my community choir playlist have uh, given me permission to use their video and audio for the purpose of my demonstration this evening. Um, so the track that we'll be working with is Here Comes the Sun by The Beatles. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to add in our backing track. So I'm gonna add a new track 
and you can see it brings up some options here. So voices and microphones, piano and keyboards, guitar, bass, drums and beats, all sorts of things. Um, so we actually don't need to do that first. I'm going to bring up my finder window. Um, so here's all my stuff. So here comes the sun backing track and I'm just going to drag that in and you can say, see there that, that um, opens. Oh, hold on. Sorry, I'm just going to stop share for a second to share sound. Okay. Um, so if we just press play, here our backing track is in. So now we have our backing track. There are no voices on that backing track. That is just piano and a little bit of shaker that I have pre recorded ahead of time. So now we need to bring in our voices. So this particular arrangement is a three part arrangement, it's a soprano alto tenor arrangement. So I have one voice from each part for use today. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to start with um, the melody. So that will be uh, Lisa. So you can see here that I have Lisa's video and I have used audioextractor.net to extract the audio from that. So I've downloaded that as an MP3. So I'm going to drag Lisa's audio in. Now, so you can see that her um, voice starts about here. Um, so it won't be in time with the music. So if we listen now, we'll see that she will, she's not aligned correctly with the music. So I've just dropped her in. It's not lined up. That's absolutely fine. All that that means is she started recording her video before she started the backing track, which is the right thing to do. Uh, so that means that we have to align her with the backing track. So you can see that we can only move her that way at the moment because there's too much um, too much of the track before she starts singing. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to pull her back. So you can see that when I hover over the track, there's a little bracket with an arrow in it. So I'm going to click on that and I'm just going to drag it up like that. Um, and then we can just by clicking and dragging, we can move her around. Now, if I scroll in a little bit more, you'll be able to see if I click and drag her, it moves in like chunks. It moves in these little small sections um, marked off here at the top. So it only moves in like kind of clicks. We can't move it in much smaller increments. And that's because we have this little magnet icon on here. So if you hover, hover over, it says snap to grid. So it's going to automatically attach our audio clip to the grid. So if I unselect that, I can then move this around much, uh, much more freely so I can move it in as tiny increments as I want. So let's try and um, line Lisa up with the track. that's much closer but she's a tiny little bit um behind still so i'll just pull her forward a tiny bit okay now she's a tiny bit ahead i'll split the difference okay great nice so this is kind of one of the time consuming um processes in this process and um, you do have to everyone that you drop in you do have to kind of manually line up now if you wanted to make it a little bit easier on you um when you're if you're recording like a backing track or a guide track or that kind of thing you could put a clap so in some of my projects i'd put a countdown and a clap so before the track starts i would go three two one clap um, and then you just get all of your participants or singers or musicians or whoever to clap on the clap. So that way you're still likely to get some people that are maybe a little bit out of time um, or some people who don't do the clap or that kind of thing. But it does, takes a little bit of the um, time consumingness out of it um, because you have, you, you can kind of line everyone up by the clap and then it should just be kind of fine tuning the timing. Um, so you could do that if you wanted. Otherwise, you know, you do, the more you do it, the faster you get at it. Once you have someone in, then you can kind of approximately line people up by Lisa, that kind of thing. Um, so that is Lisa in. So I'm gonna bring in our next singer. I'm gonna bring in Helen. 
Again, I have Helen's video with her audio there, and then I've used um, audioextractor.net to extract the audio. So I'm just going to pull Helen in. So again, you can see she's pretty close in timing, which means that she probably just pressed play on her video and then pressed play in the, on the track, that kind of thing. Um, so again, we're going to shorten her starting silence so we can move her up a little bit. So again, our little bracket with the, an arrow in it, and we'll just pull that down. We'll zoom in a little bit. So I'm just doing the two finger thing on my, um, on my mouse pad. And then I'm just gonna kind of manually adjust her and we'll see how we get on. So let's just mute Lisa for a minute. So that's just the little um, speaker with an X beside it. So mute, unmute. So let's hear Helen. I'm just going to turn Helen up a little bit just because I know she's a slightly quieter singer. So pretty close. She's a tiny bit behind. So I'm just going to move her up by a teeny weeny bit. <clears throat> Again, she's fractionally behind. Right, so let's hear Helen and Lisa together. So um, we'll add in Debbie, who is our soprano next. So same thing, I've just ripped Debbie's audio from her video. And I'm just dragging and dropping her in. So there's a little bit more space um, before um, Lisa and Helen are in. So we have to, again, just trim Debbie down at the start. And then we will line her up just by eye. So let's... Mute up Helen and Lisa for a minute. Cool. So again, you see that once you have a couple of singers in, lining it up becomes a little bit easier because you're lining them up to each other as opposed to trying to kind of line them up just based on the track. So I'm only going to bring in three singers um, just for the purpose of the demonstration. So we can see that they're all nicely lined up. Great. Okay, so just for a minute, I'm just going to mute these three and we're just going to listen to the start of Helen's track for a minute. You can hear it's pretty much quiet, pretty much silent because she would have her headphones in listening to the backing track, but you do get a little bit of, you know, maybe someone moving around in their chair or swallowing or taking a breath or, you know, maybe a little bit of noise from the ground, that kind of thing. So it's always a good idea if you do have long sections of silence to trim those out, just because, you know, you might not notice it if it's one person, um, kind of just the ambient noise in whatever space they're in before they start. Um, but if you have, for example, 30 people doing their, you know, that, that, that sound can, will become 30 times louder. Um, so it's always a good idea to trim out any sections of audio that we have. So let's have a look at doing that. So I'm just going to go just before where the audio comes in. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim them to there. I'm just going to pull them all up by eye. You can also, um, if you right click on a track, uh, it brings up this menu, you can split region. So again, that just split it where the cursor line is, and you can delete that bit. So you can either do right click split region, um, or you can do command E. So select the track, command E, it splits it there, that kind of thing. Um, and then, so if you, again, if you hover over a track and you hit edit, it gives you some other options. So fade in, fade out. I'm going to do a little fade in 
Um, so you can see there it sets us a default fade out that's quite long or a fade in that's quite long. I'm just going to pull that back to just really just where the audio starts or where the where the singing starts. So I'm going to do the same for each of them. And this just gives us a little bit of a softer start to the track. So again, we're not going to get that, uh, you know, where, when, the, when the track starts and we hear all that ambient noise. Um, so we want to fade it in just to where the singing starts. So now we're going to get this kind of sound. So it's just a little bit more natural. It means that we don't get kind of a, a sound clip. Um, you know, if we do have, we'll say, 20 or 30 singers and you cut out the silence, then you, you, you know, you run the risk of hearing it when you when the tracks do start. And um, so you want to give a, a tiny little bit of that silence before the singers start um because you don't want it to be like here comes this uh, you know you don't want it to start right on it you want to give it just a tiny bit of breathing room and fade in that can be like half a beat it can be really really short but it just means that you have a slightly more natural start to the phrase um so again here you can see that we have a couple of seconds of silence so let's just listen to the end of this phrase and we'll try and cut out some of this silence. So again, we don't want any harsh cuts that we're going to hear the, the, the audio stop. We want to find a nice natural point that we can fade it out over a short time. So let's just listen to the last phrase and see where we want to cut that. It's all right. Out there, hear that again? Just we want to make sure that the line has finished, that we can then cut it and fade it out. It's all right. Out there. So I'm just going to put the cursor where I want it. I'm going to select those three tracks just by clicking, uh, oops, just by clicking and dragging. And then I'm going to do command E that snips them all. And then we'll do the same thing here just before this phrase. I'm just putting my cursor where I want to cut it. About there, clicking and dragging to select them all command E. And then I can um, click and drag again and delete those. And here I can do edit, fade out. Same thing, just to give us a slightly more natural sound. Edit, fade out and edit, fade out. I'll just cut those. Pull those fades to be smaller. So then we get this. It's all right. So that means we're eliminating the risk of any kind of ambient noise, someone <clears throat> clearing their throat or kind of shuffling their feet. Very frequently it, it, with playlists, which is my community choir, you might hear someone's dog in the background or, you know, they might be singing with the window open. You might hear noise of a car passing, all sorts of things. Someone turning over a sheet in their sheet music, all sorts of noises. And generally people you know, if someone's going to turn a sheet in their sheet music, they're generally going to try and do it in a bit where they're not singing. So it doesn't disrupt the singing, um, which makes it easier to cut out. So that's just <clears throat> a brief word about kind of structuring your audio. Um, so you might want to do a little bit of um, editing to the vocals. Uh, so let's let's have a little bit of a look at that. Let's work with Helen just for the moment. So let's mute those two. Just turn down the track a little bit. So um, I'm going to, going to go to Helen's track and I'm going to click on this little, um, this little uh, wave thing here. It's a little wave icon that says show instrument. So you can see here that we have a couple of settings, um, bass, treble, treble, reverb, pan and volume. I ever turned up quite loud just because Helen is a, a little bit of a more quiet singer. I'm going to turn up the reverb on her a little bit. Um, Generally, I, I, I will say before I go on that uh, audio editing is very much not my specialty. It's something that I can do to a basic level. Um, but most of the things that I've learned, um, I've learned from watching YouTube videos. So I would, I'm, I'm not really going to talk about audio editing too much here, just because I think that um, I don't want to give anyone wrong information. Um, and that kind of goes for everything that I'm saying. I'm not an expert in any of these things. I just had to learn quite quickly a year ago how to do all this kind of stuff. So you might be thinking of a different or a 
more straightforward way of doing something like that um, or any of the processes that I'm doing. If you have an alternative way of doing it, uh, a better way of doing it, a quicker way of doing it, that's absolutely fine. I'm not saying that this is the only way to do anything. This is just the way that I have been doing it. Um, so with that said, I'm not going to go on too much about audio editing, but generally what I add um, is I add a little bit of EQ, so equalization, um, a little bit of compression, which um, basically compression reduces the dynamic range of a, an audio clip. <clears throat> so for example, if someone is really quiet in a verse and really loud in a chorus, or maybe, you know, they're just humming in the first verse and then the last chorus, they're going kind of balls to the wall. And um, it means that you add a little bit of compression and it basically, it brings the quieter bits and the louder bits a little bit closer together. So you're not gonna have to change the volume all throughout the song. Um, so that can be helpful in making sure that, you know, someone can be heard in the louder bits, but then isn't going to take the listener's head off in the quiet, in the, in the louder bits. So generally I add a little bit of EQ, um, a little bit of compression and a little bit of reverb. Um, reverb just gives it a little bit, a little bit more of a natural sound. Um, it can be quite forgiving. Uh, you, you know, it, it, it stops it sounding so kind of dry and exposed. It can kind of give it a little bit of glossy shine. Um, a little bit of an echoey kind of kind of vibe. Um, so here you can add your effects. So if we click add effect, you see we have all sorts of effects here. Um, so what I mentioned were EQ or the equal equalizer. Um, so if if you work in another DAW, um, Pro Tools or Logic or Ableton, anything like that, the EQ probably looks very, very different to this. But generally, you have your different frequency bands, so your low frequencies, your mid frequencies, and your high frequencies. Um, so this is a very, very simplified version of what an EQ might look like in um, a different piece of software. But fundamentally, it does all of the same things. Um, so let's just listen to Helen and we'll just see what happens when I boost the high frequencies. Here comes the sun. Do -do -do -do. Here comes the sun and I say it's all right. So we start getting a real kind of kind of like an old radio sound, really kind of crunchy at the top, very kind of bright, a little bit tinny. Um, so we'll we'll put all those back to center and we'll see what happens when we um, boost all our low and mid frequencies. Here comes the sun. Do -do 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 -do. Here comes the sun, and I say it's all right. So that also had a very dramatic effect. It goes kind of boomy. Really, it's the it's the mids here that were that that are gonna have the biggest impact. Um, when it comes to the low frequencies, they generally be addressing more things like kick drums, bass drums, um, bass guitar, low piano thing, that kind of thing. When we say low low um frequencies in our voice isn't really going to fall into the frequency band of 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 the low frequencies on a on an eq and um, it's really going to be mid frequencies um so you can have a little bit of a mess around with eq and um, i think in the in the powerpoint i did include a video on kind of the basics of vocal eq um so i'll let you have a look at that in your own time i'm not going to pretend to know everything about eq but I usually, um, in, in some of the other DAWs, you'll have defaults. So you might have, you know, a choir vocal default EQ setting. So you can kind of start with a, with a um, start with an EQ setting, and then you can kind of trust your ears, find a sound that you like. Um, but the, the kind of the default settings um, or some of the presets can be really helpful kind of in getting you going. So again, you could have any effects if you wanted to add you know, a delay or distortion, overdrive, anything like that, you could absolutely do that. And these these all apply to any instrument tracks as well that you might have, not just voices. Um, Okie dokie. I will close that down. So you would go through kind of the whole song. Um, if you wanted to, let's say, for example, um, I don't need the others. Let's just say for gas that Lisa was her, her timing was off on this phrase, we'll say, I would just drop my little cursor, I would 
split that um, clip. So again, command E, and then you can drag that around. So if you do need to, um, you know, if, if, if someone's timing maybe isn't great on a certain phrase, they're a little bit behind the phrase, a little bit before the phrase, that kind of thing, you can, you know, you can chop up the audio and move it around whatever way you like. Um, cool. Okay. So then you can, you know, you can set your volumes. Maybe you want to add a little bit of reverb to the backing track, that kind of thing. Maybe you want to add in some other instruments. You know, I'm, I'm using voices as an example, but of course you could, you could bring in a track of drums. You could program some drums and um, you can do loads in Soundtrap. And like I said, you know, all of these DAWs fundamentally do the same thing. Um, so the reason that I'm using Soundtrap really is because it's a free version and because it's not an app that you have to download. So it doesn't really matter what kind of computer you have. Um, it, it's just a it's, it's just a browser thing. So it's not like, oh, if you don't have this operating system or if you're on a PC and not a Mac, you can't get it. There's none of that. You can also get it on your tablet or your iPad. You can get it on your phone. It's great. It works on everything. Um, so that's kind of the basics of bringing your tracks in. So again, you'd kind of make sure that everything is aligned manually, um, adjust any volumes that you might want to adjust, snip out any big bits of silence, do little fades in, fades out, um, to cut out any kind of ambient sound, add any effects that you want to add. Um, yeah, that's that that's uh, sound trap. So again, very straightforward. You've got a little tutorials tab, which is which is helpful. Um, you know, you've got your keyboard shortcuts. They've got a forum, frequently asked questions, video tutorials. They're really really great. They're 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 excellent. Um, okay, so then we would. Oh, interesting. Why can't I download that? Oh, I have to save my project. I just went to share. So it just takes a little minute to save your work. <clears throat> Lovely, okay. So as you can see now that I've saved it, it's now mixing it. So once it has mixed itself, um, it's not actually changing any of the mix. It's just kind of, I suppose, just saving it internally in Soundtrap system. But once it's mixed, then you'll be able to download your track as an MP3, and then we can talk about video editing. So with, with, with this kind of audio editing, you can kind of go in as much as you like. You could, you know, you can add different kinds of reverb. You can add compression. You can add EQ. You can do really, you know, as, as much as you like. Um, with this kind of stuff, or you can just line it up, call it a day. That's absolutely fine. Um, at the start of the pandemic, when I started doing these virtual performance videos, um, the shame of my life, um, I, I, I wasn't dealing with the audio separately. So I was trying to do it all in Final Cut Pro, which is the video software, which I'll be talking about shortly. Um, so I wasn't mixing all the audio separately. And that was just total waste of time. Um, but by doing that, I was just lining up the audio and changing the volumes. I wasn't adding any audio effects. I wasn't adding any reverb, anything like that. Um, I was kind of just doing the bare minimum, just lining up the voices. So you absolutely can do that if you want. Um, but when it comes to, you know, EQ, reverb, compression, that kind of thing, um, presets are going to be your best friend. If you, if you don't know a lot about EQ and reverb and all that kind of stuff, which, you know, like I said, I don't know the most about everything that I've learned is from, you know, YouTube videos and just trial and error. Um, so I would recommend kind of looking up that kind of stuff, but presets really are going to be your best friend. You know, if you don't know where to start with compression in most DAWs, when you open up a compressor, you can, you can add a preset. So like clean vocals, preset one, that kind of thing. Um, start with that, see what you think about it. But all I'm saying is that you can, you know, you can go the extra mile, add reverb, compression, EQ, all that kind of stuff, or you can just line up your tracks and call it a day. And that's also fine. So that is finished mixing now. So now we have our little download icon. So I'm going to click on that and I've downloaded it there. <clears throat> okay. 
So let's jump back into PowerPoint for a moment. So hopefully that makes sense, guys. Um, so that is our audio kind of dealt with for the moment. Okay. So let's talk about video editing software. Um, I personally use Final Cut Pro. Uh, it is only available on Apple, unfortunately. Um, it is expensive, but they do have a 90 day free trial, which is excellent, which means that you can download it and try it out for three months without having to pay for it, which is 100% what I did. Um, I did then opt to buy it just because I found that I was using it all the time. I was doing these videos for my choir playlist. I was doing them for my own vocal ensemble, the Theodore Byrne Ensemble. I was doing them for other groups. Um, so it just, it was a, it was an investment that made sense for me. Um, for Final Cut Pro, you do need a very up-to-date operating system. So I had to, before I got my new laptop, I had to update my operating system. Um, but it is, it does have excellent functionality, personally, I find. Um, you could also use iMovie. Again, this is only available on Apple, um, but it is free. It comes as standard with a with a uh, an Apple computer. Um, it's free, but there is less functionality. So you can create these kind of picture in picture videos, but you can only add them one video at a time, which is a very time consuming and laborious process. Um, there is an app called Wondershare Filmora, so this is available for Apple or Windows. Again, it is free, but you are a little bit limited with the functionality. Now, if you only have a video with three or four people, that kind of thing, you absolutely can make it work. Um, but I think the most people that I've had for one of these projects is 48 off the top of my head. Um, so obviously I need something that has the most functionality. And there's also Adobe Premiere which is also Apple or Windows. Again, high functionality, gives you loads of options, but is more expensive. So those are just some, some options. There might well be more, um, but those are kind of the four main ones, I reckon. So I'm gonna show you how to do this in Final Cut Pro because that's what I use when I'm actually doing projects like this. Uh, so again, just here's some, some helpful videos for Final Cut Pro. So kind of getting started, importing footage, exporting, some shortcuts, that kind of thing. And then just a similar thing in other video editing software. So iMovie, Filmora and Adobe Premiere. Um, I've included one I'm in getting started and then I've included one in picture in picture. So that's kind of the functionality that we're using here to get kind of multi-frame video. Um, I know in iMovie it's called picture in picture. In some others it's called picture in picture or um, overlay, video overlay, something like that. Um, but that's just kind of a general getting started and a picture in picture in each of those um, video editing softwares. Um, okay. So I would like to talk for a moment about frames. So, um, keynote. So when you are making your video, you want to know what it's going to look like before you start. So in order to know what it's going to look like, you're going to need to know how many people you have. That's going to totally depend on what kind of project it is. Maybe you're going to have four people. Maybe you're going to have two people. Maybe you're going to have 30 people. However many you have, um, we're going to figure out a layout. So um, the standard, whether it's a laptop or a phone video is um, a certain aspect ratio. Um, so I can't remember what the, what the, the size is, but it's 1920 pixels by 1080 pixels. Um, so 1920 by 1080. And that is that, that's the, the proportional, uh, ratio of the size of your image. That's a very complicated way of saying that. Sorry. Um, so you're going to want to figure out how everyone is going to fit onto the screen. Sometimes, you know, you know, I have. 16 people and all of them are going to submit with something like playlist which is my community choir we have about 35 members and when i put a virtual choir project out of them they're not they're not uh, required to participate so i don't really know until everyone has submitted how many people i'm actually going to have sometimes i might have 18 people sometimes i might have 
22 people. Sometimes I might have 27 people. It just depends. So I can't really plan until I have everyone back. But then once I have everyone back, once I know how many people I have, I make myself a little frame. I call these frames or backdrops so that I can use this as a guide when I'm editing in Final Cut Pro. Um, so sometimes you end up with a very similar or a very simple um, number and I square number four by four, that kind of thing. So all I do here, let me just give you an example of how I actually do this. So I get a new slide, I delete all these. So I just have an empty frame um, and then I add a shape. So I add a box just for gas. And then I'm going to fill this box as white. I'm going to set a border of a line. Let's make it two points for the gas just to have it. So then I have my box with a black line around it. Then I go up here and I go to arrange. This is um, Keynote, this software, which is just like the, the Mac version of, of um, PowerPoint. But you could use PowerPoint, you could use Keynote, you could use Microsoft Paint. I'm sure there you could use Photoshop. You could use there are loads of things that you could use. And the reason this is handy is because this standard slide size, which I think is the widescreen default slide, is the same aspect ratio as a video. So I've clicked on my box and I'm going to go to arrange up here. So now I can change the size of my box. So I'm just going to put it in as 1920 by 1080. So that's going to make it the size of the frame. Um, so then I need to make that smaller. So let's say I just wanted to put four, four boxes. So I'm just using my, cal my um, calculator and I'm doing 1920 divided by, um, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna cut it in two. So 960, probably could have done that math in my head, but I didn't, 960. So I'm gonna constrain those proportions and that's gonna make it half the size. So I've constrained the proportions, so it's gonna keep the, relationship between those two the same. So now I've got a box that is exactly half the size of the one of the of the frame, we'll say. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste. So I've just duplicated that box. And then I'm going to select them both, copy and paste again and just drag that. So all I've done is I've created a grid, basically, um, that now we have four equal sized boxes. Um, let's say I wanted to do six people. So I wanted to do three on the top and three on the bottom. Um, I would do 1920 divided by three. So that's going to be 640. So let's just for a moment, just delete those three. So I'm going to go with this one. So I'm going to go back and change my size. Now, what I want to do is I want to have three along the top, but still only two high. So I'm going to unconstrain my proportions. I'm going to keep the height the same but I'm going to make this smaller. So I've done 1920, which is our width measurement. And I'm going to divide that by three and that gives us 640. So now you can see we have a, a the same height of a box, but a narrower width. So again, I'm just going to duplicate that and duplicate that again and then select them all and duplicate them down there. So now you can see we have a six person frame. So I've, I'm gonna show you a couple of options here. So I've got a, a four by four. So again, this is just a little bit of math. It's gonna depend on what you need, but just find the right size box that fits as many as cross, as many across as you need and as many up and down as you need. So I'll show you some, this, these are just screenshots from some of the ones that I've done. So this is six, uh, 18 people, so six, six, and six. Um, this is one, two, five, six, four, 20, 24 people. So six across the top by four down. Um, this is 27 people. So it was an uneven number of people. So I couldn't do um, the same amount in every row. So what I did was I worked out that it could be five rows down so five by five that's 25 and then I needed two more 27 so I made the second and the fourth row um one extra box so it means that the ones on the second and the fourth row are slightly narrower than the ones on the first third and fifth row 
but everyone's the same height so you kind of don't really notice it um this is one that i did with the theater over an ensemble which is my own ensemble this is 26 singers plus an artist so the the main artist is the equivalent of four singers so that would have been 30 so that's six across by five down here's one that i did with saint sister so this is 32 singers plus Gemma and Morgan. So they are four each. Um, so that was 32 plus eight. So that was 40. So eight across five down. And um, here's one that I did with Bell X1. So this one was more tricky because I think I had 38 singers. So again, you can see that um, every second row, there are there's one extra singer per, per row. So they're the same height, but every the, the this row and this row, each of the singers is slightly narrower than the other rows. So that one was a bit of kind of mental, um, mental confusion. Um, but it worked out in the end. There's almost always a solution. Um, so here is one, two, three, four, five by four. So that's 20. Um, here is the 27 one. So that was this one. So you can see what that frame looks like. Um, just for the purpose of demonstration today, I am going to do three. So here's one, here's two, here's three. It means that we are going to have a little bit of um, just black background, but that's absolutely fine. Um, I don't mind that too much. This is just for demonstrative purposes. So what we would do here to, because this is, you know, in a, in a, in a keynote presentation format. So I'm just going to go to file export to and I'm going to export it to an image. It's a, a, a JPEG. I go to next, I name it something. I've already exported this, so I'm not going to do it. Um, so that means that I should here final cut backdrop as a as a JPEG. So okay. Now let's go into Final Cut Pro. So I'm gonna open Final Cut Pro. Oh, I already opened a new project. You can see that I've already made us a new project, but you would just go to file, new project, and you can put in your project name, whatever it is. Do, do, do. I'm not going to because I already created one earlier. Okay, this is a little bit of a confusing process, so I'll try and break it down as much as I can. Um, so the first thing that we want to do before we start adding any, any singers, any videos, we just want to set ourselves up with a black background. So this is what Final, Cru Final Cut Pro looks like when you open a new project. So this is our screen where kind of our work in progress is going to come up and um, we're going to have some editing tools over here. And then this is our, um, what would we call it? I don't, I, our, our timeline, our, yeah, our video timeline. Let's call it a video timeline. Here we've got some kind of default credits, some titles, all these kind of things, which which come in handy to various degrees. Um, but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put in a black background. So we've got a couple of different options over here. Um, so, ooh, sorry. Um, so here, if we wanted to add in media, we would we could select it there. If we want to add in photos or music, da da da. Uh, or if we want to add in titles and generators. So we want titles for the minute. So I'm gonna go down to generators and I'm gonna go to solids. And here we have different colors. I'm just gonna put in a, pull in a solid black frame. So I'm gonna drop that in there. Um, it asks us for some, for some um, video property information. I'm just gonna press okay and leave it at that. We don't need to set anything there. Um, so now we've got just a plain black background for a couple of seconds. We can go to the end of that and you see we have a little bracket with arrows and we can drag that to be as long as we like. Next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add our audio. So we downloaded our audio, there it is. And I'm just going to drag and drop that in. We wanna drag that, oops, sorry. Uh, we wanna drag that underneath our black screen. Now again, you can just click and drag and bring that wherever you like. Um, I'm not gonna bring it quite up to the very start. I'm just gonna bring it back a tiny bit. 
So then our cursor back before it, press, just click there. And then if we press um, spacebar, it starts to play. I'm going to turn that down just because every time I hover over it, it uh, plays just so it's not quite as annoying. So again, we could drag that right up to the front and then when we press play, it'll immediately start. But I choose to just drag it back a little bit. Um, again, if you're on a Mac, you can zoom in and out by doing the two finger pinch thing, um, which is quite handy when you are editing video. Um, we can we can also we can adjust the start, you know, how soon the the music starts and all that kind of thing. We can continue to drag that around. Um, OK, so now we've got our plain black frame down, our black background, and we've got our music in. The next thing we're going to add is our um, our backdrop or our frame to show us where everyone is going to go. So I'm going to go back into Finder. And I have that here export as an image. Again, I'm just going to drag it in and I'm going to drop it just above our black frame. And then again, I'm going to stretch that out. We can delete this later. So you can pop it in wherever you like. I just like to stretch it out a bit. Just so it's so it's there and I can refer to, you know, you could drag it to be the length of the whole song if you wanted to. I am going to drag our black frame to be the length of the whole song. Just cause. Okay, so now we have our black backdrop, which once we take out our um, our our uh, keynote frame, that will be our black background. Uh, we have our audio and we have our uh, the final cut pro or the pardon me, the keynote backdrop, which is telling us where our singers or our musicians or whatever participants you have in your virtual uh, performance is going to go. So then we can start bringing in our performers. So just the same way that we started with Lisa for the audio, I'm going to put Lisa in first. Um, so let's just for the minute, we have these three icons here. I'm just going to click on this leftmost one, which is going to hide those ones. We don't need them for the moment. I am going to pull this up a little bit. So all we're going to do is we're going to drag and drop everyone in one at a time. So again, this can be a little bit time consuming because similarly to the audio, we have to line them up manually. Um, so I'm going to drag Lisa's video in. And again, you want to, whenever you drag something new in, you want to drag it at, at the top. So our black background is always going to be our bottom layer. Well, the audio is going to be the very bottom layer, but visually our black backdrop is going to be our bottom layer. And we want to have our frame so we know where everyone goes second up from that. You don't want to drop that in first. You want to make sure that your black background layer is always your bottom thing. And then every new video that you add, you want to add them on top. So now we have Lisa here. So let's line her up. We've got some ambient noise there. Let's see how out of time Lisa is just by dropping her in there. Here comes the sun. Okay. So she's a little bit behind the track. So similar to what we did with the audio, we're going to just go to the start of her video because we can't move her up any further now. She's as far as she can get, she's right in at the top. So we're just going to, again, when we go, to, when we hover over the top of her video, we have the little bracket with the arrows. So we're just going to click and we're going to drag her down a little bit. And then we are going to push very loud. Let's make Lisa a little bit quieter. And we're just going to, Shrunt her up a little bit and let's see where she lands. Now she's a little bit ahead. I'm going to zoom in a bit more. This just allows me to um, be a little bit more delicate in my movements. Nearly there. She's still a tiny bit ahead. That's pretty good. So now we've manually lined her up um, with the audio. So now what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, if, if you hover over Lisa's video, you can see there that we have this little 
a horizontal line that runs through and then we can see the the wave of her of the audio of her video so i'm now going to click on that line and pull it down so i've taken the audio out so now we want to go back over that little phrase and we want to watch it again and see if now that now we're using our eyes see if she is visually lined up we know that she's more or less audio wise lined up but now we just want to make sure visually that it looks like she's lined up That looks pretty good to me. I'm going to maybe shift her just by one little tiny notch. I think I overcorrected. Let's put her back where she was. Yeah. Great. So we first start by um, lining her up audio wise that's just kind of the quickest way to do it and then you want to take out the audio so again you've just got this little horizontal line that runs underneath her video and then you can see the shape of the wave so you just want to click on that line and just pull it down pull it right the way down um so now we've got so now we're not getting any audio from lisa's video we're just getting the audio from the um the track that we made on soundtrap so, okay, the next thing we want to do is we want to make Lisa the right size because currently she's taking up the whole frame, but we need to add in another two singers. So we want to resize her video. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to um, click on Lisa's video so we can see there that it's highlighted in yellow. And then we want to go to this little, um, we have three little icons here. We're not going to worry about the two on the right. We're just going to worry about this one. We're going to click on the little arrow. So you have a few options. You have transform, crop, and distort. Um, we're gonna click on transform. And this means we're gonna resize. So we can do this in two ways. Um, I know that I want to make the video smaller. So we can do it in two ways. Either we can just grab the corner and we can manually resize her that way. So we could manually resize her to fit in that box like that or we could make her much smaller we can make her bigger we can manually resize her to be what any whatever size we like let's just go back to 100 percent. so this is her full size um if you remember in keynote when we <clears throat> when we um made those boxes to make the three um the three frames we cut the, the the full size we made it 50 percent of the size so we want her to be if you if if we look at this let's just make lisa tiny for a minute put her out of the way Oop. just for a second you can see that one of these boxes is half the height and half the width so it's 50 percent of the size so e, e. we can also go over here to the transform box and in scale all you see it's at 100 percent if you click on that and type in 50 percent it's going to automatically cut her down to 50 percent of the size we could put in 25 percent and it would make her a quarter of the size we could put in 33 percent and it would make her a third of the size and so on we're going to make her 50 percent of the size and then we can just click and move her around manually and there you can see if we hit done that is Lisa in her nice new corner and she is 50% of the height and 50% of the width um, and she is perfectly in her new box. Uh, personally for my videos I like everyone to have a little black border so what I would probably do is sorry to to, to reactivate or re uh, select her box you can just hit transform again or you can right click on her video and then transform. I would probably make her let's say 48 percent that's too big 49 percent so if you want her to her her video to be 50 percent of the of the size i would then make it one percent smaller just so we have a nice little black frame around her um so that is what i would do and then you can you know shunt her around whatever way you like until you have her in the right spot you can also once you have everyone added you can go back and select um, whichever videos you know if you found oh actually I want her to be a tiny bit smaller or a tiny bit more to the left or a tiny bit up 
that kind of thing. You can go back and change that after. So I'm going to click done. So that is Lisa done. So you can see we haven't moved her image. We have, sorry, we haven't moved um, where and when she starts playing. She's still going to be in sync to the music. We've just moved her image. There she is bopping away. If we, you know, if we wanted to change where she comes in, again, we can start her video wherever, wherever we want. So we could just start her right before the music starts, if we wanted to. You know, we could just have her start right before the music. You can extend the start wherever you like. Um, okay, so that's Lisa added. I'm going to put her back here a little bit. Let's add Helen. So I know, guys, I'm flying through this quite fast. There's quite a lot in it, but um, you'll be able to watch this back, which is dead handy. So again, I'm going to drag and drop Helen in, and I'm just going to pull her right to the start. So again, you can see that Helen is taking up the whole frame. Lisa is underneath there, and once we resize Helen, um, you will see her, I promise. So she's a little bit ahead of the track, that's fine. So again, we can just click and move around. So still a little bit ahead. So I'm just clicking and holding and dragging. So still a tiny bit off. Like I'm moving these by tiny increments, guys. The the further you're zoomed in the smaller increments you can move and the further you're zoomed out it'll move in larger increments so if you're finding that it's moving it by too big of a time just try zooming in a little bit more that's pretty good so again we've got her little uh, volume line here it's currently at zero db so if we just click on that you see if you hover over it it gives you the option to adjust volume if I go away and come back, there you go, adjust volume. So we're just going to pull that right down and let's look at her and see if visually um, we can see that uh, she is aligned up. It's pretty good. She looks like just one tiny notch ahead for me. Yeah, that looks pretty in sync to me. So now we want to uh, resize Helen so that we can um, fit her into one of those boxes. So again, we're going to make sure we have Helen's video selected. We're going to go to this little menu here. Um, it's currently on transform, which is what we want it to be on. So we're just going to click on transform again. You can see then that the little, um, the little line and the blue dots come up around. So again, we could manually resize her or we could scale her so again I'm going to do 49% just so we have that little um border around her and again so now she's the right size so I'm just going to pop her into this box here oh I think okay Helen's video is a little bit wider again that just could be the kind of phone that she has or Kind of camera that she's using maybe she's shooting on her laptop or an ipad that kind of thing it can be very very slightly different so that's a great opportunity for me to show the crop function so what i'm going to do is you see when we resize lisa to 49 percent, it gave us a little bit of a gap on either side whereas we don't have that with helen which means that her video is just ever so slightly wider so we're going to crop helen's video just by a tiny bit so if we go back down to this little menu we'll see that transform is still uh, activated and um, so we want to click on that and go to crop and crop is going to bring us a, again these little blue things around the corner and a dotted line so we can crop whatever way we like it from any of these little blue markers we can crop so we could grab this top one and ooh, we could grab this top little blue one and we could crop her down like that we could grab this side one and we could crop her in like that we could grab a corner one and crop her in like that. Whatever way you want to do. We're just going to take her in a tiny bit at the sides. So I'm going to do this side first. And I'm just kind of doing this by eye. I'm looking at kind of how big the gap here 
but Lee says it is. It's just very, very small. I'm going to pull that in on either side. And again, we can go back and adjust this if it doesn't look right in the end, but that's basically how we do it. So we could, you know, continue to pull in. Ooh, sorry, that went on to Lisa. Um, we could continue to, ooh, will you come on? Um, we could crop her in as much as we wanted to or as much as we needed to, but I'm just going to do the little bit on each side just to make it nice and uniform with Lisa. And then I'm going to hit done. And then Helen is in situ at a similar size to Lisa. And then you can see. They look nice and in sync, but we're not getting either of the audio from their videos. We've taken that audio out and we're just hearing the audio from the uh, video. So I'm going to add our last singer, which is Debbie. I'm going to drop Debbie in. And let's firstly line her up. Oh, we can see that. We can see that Debbie is quite a bit further off, so we're going to need to um, pull her her video. We're going to cut some of this space at the start. We're going to pull her up. Ooh, yeah, pull her up a little bit. Again, I'm just clicking and dragging. Let's see how we did that. Okay, pulled her up too much. So maybe just one tiny little notch to far up. That's pretty good. So again, we just go to our volume line. It's currently at zero dB and adjust and just pull it right down. So we're fundamentally muting her audio. And we'll just use our eyes to check if we're visually happy with how she's lined up. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. So now we've got Debbie lined up. We've taken out her audio. So next we need to resize her video. So same thing, making sure Debbie's video is selected with the yellow line around it. I'm going to go back to this menu. It's currently on crop. So we want to go to transform. So when we click on transform, we have our little blue dots. So again, we could... Uh, manually resize it but I'm going to again use the scale tool just I feel that it's a little bit more accurate so again I'm going to put in 49 and then she should be the right size and then we can just click and drag and pull Debbie into the right spot again just try and get her kind of center on in her box and then we hit done and then go back to here they should all be in sync and they're all the right size. Lovely. So now we have all our singers in the right place. You know, this is this is just an example of three, but you you know you could add your 10, 20, 30, however many singers that you have. Um again, this is a little bit time consuming trying to manually line everybody up. Um, but at least you don't have to worry about the audio. So you line them up and then just pull out the audio. And you have your lovely edited audio from Soundtrap or whatever doll. So now we have our singers in they look great they're all in the right place so now we can get rid of our our frame from uh our little frame that tells us where to put people so what we have to do is click on it so it's got a yellow line around it and just backspace to take it out and then we have our three singers in and they look lovely and they're just set against a nice plain black background everybody getting ready to sing Okay, so now we've got our singers in. So the next thing we need to do is we want to decide where visually are the singers going to come in. So we don't necessarily, so the, I think the, the vocals come in at around 16 or so seconds. So we don't necessarily want 16 seconds of the singers just being like, you know, kind of scratching their arses. So we'll just decide where we want them in. So maybe it might be nice to have them come in on a certain beat of the music. So let's just have a little listen. So maybe on that like second phrase. Do, 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 do. 
YouTube, so there. So I've just listened, found a spot that I like, and then I have paused it. So my cursor is at the point that I'd like them to come in. So I'm just going to, so I've got my cursor there now. I'm just going to select the three videos just by clicking and dragging over them. I'm going to make sure that the little red line is on the same line as my main cursor line. And I'm going to press, I think, Command B. Yes, Command B. And then that splits the clips. So then we don't need these first half, so we just click out of those. And then, so now, see what happens now. Now they come in at the point that we've decided. Now you can have it like that, just kind of a hard video comes on. You can also, um, you can set it to fade in if you like, which can be nice. So to do that, you come over here, we have some menus here. And this last one, the furthest right is the transitions browser. So if you click on that, we have all sorts of transitions. Cross dissolve is kind of just a regular fade. So you just click and drag that onto each of the videos. And you can see there, it gives us a little, little gray cross dissolve box there. So that's gonna look like this. Ah, very nice. Um, so when, when you put a cross dissolve on the start of a video, it also automatically puts a cross dissolve on the end of the video. So let's just for a minute take the cross dissolves off because actually you should edit the lengths. So again, sometimes it can be really nice just to let each video kind of run till its end because then you see everyone's face after and they look delighted. See people's faces are delighted with themselves and then they turn off their video. So that's kind of a nice little a natural thing or similar you can just decide where you want to end it so i'm going to stop it there i've decided that that's where i want all my videos to end again just click and drag to select each of the videos command b and then we can just delete those little end bits so now we have our clean start so a hard cut in the start and then a hard cut in the end and then if we add our fade in and our fade out, so again, over to the transitions uh, browser, and we throw a cross dissolve on each of those videos and or the cross dissolve is a fade. And then you can see that gives us a fade at the start and a fade at the end. So it now looks like this. Nice natural fade in and then should be the same at the end. Nice natural fade out. So you can also extend the lengths of the fade if you uh, zoom in a little closer. This gray box is the length of our fade, so you could, you know, you could make it two seconds. So watch Debbie. She just fades in over longer. So again, you can have the fade be however long you like. So then you've when you've got the lengths of everything and you've got your transition sorted. So you can either have a hard cut with no fade in, no fade out, or you can have your fade in, fade out, whatever you like. And then you might want to add a title. So maybe you want to add some text to the front front of the video. Um, so I'm going to go back up to the top here and I'm going to click on that one. So that brings our little menu over here. So we want to add a title um, for a plain, um, just regular text. Uh, you go to bumper slash opener, and the option that I use is basic title. So I would just drag and drop that down there. So, you know, there's all sorts of mad looking ones here, you know, like the, the lens flare ones. There's like a kind of a fade in yoke, all sorts of fancy ones. There's loads of them. You can have a look at them. I prefer just a plain one. Um, so we've got our basic title in. So I'm going to just double click on that and put in the here comes the sun as our title. So again, you can drag this around. This is just your little bit of text. So maybe you wanted to open with the text on the video. Maybe you want there to be a little bit of black screen first. You know, you can set it to come in on a beat of the music or something. Maybe you want the text to fade in and out. So let's see what that looks like. So again, back over to our transitions browser pull in our cross dissolve and just drop that onto that. So that's going to look like this. Fades the text in. It also fades the text out. 
and slingers in. Lovely. So that looks quite nice. Um, so you can make, you know, you can drag drag the text to be longer or shorter. Um, you can change the font. You know, you can change the text, the font, the size, all of that kind of stuff. Um, but you know, these are all different kinds of titles. So like, you know, this kind of thing. You can have snazzy titles if you want. You know, all of this kind of stuff. These are all editable and they can look great. I just personally um, like a look of a plain text. And um, so again, you know, if you want to add more text at the end, you know, for our, for our playlist choir videos, I usually just put our Instagram handle. So again, you just click and drag on your basic title, drop it here at the end, um, click on it. Oh, come on. Just click on it and I would say at playlist choir. Again, make it longer or shorter. Maybe put a cross dissolve on it just for the gas. And then we have that's that's pretty much the whole thing completed. So you've got all your singers in, you've got everybody lined up to the audio. Oh, I made our audio a little bit quieter, so I'm gonna make it louder. I'm gonna put it back up to zero dB. I'll take it down a bit. So again, I'm just dragging the volume up and down. So, you know, you've got your, all your singers in kind of aligned properly. You've got your audio aligned. Oh, let's say, so I've got a little bit of, a little bit of space here before the audio and the title comes in. Let's say I, I decided, actually, no, I want the audio right in from the top. If you move the audio, your singers are going to be out of sync. So what you can do is, this is our black background. You can scoot that forward. So again, I'm just selecting that and pulling that in. So now that means that when you start it, your music's going to start straight away. So you can just bring the, 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 the black background right up to the top of the music. So we've got our titles added at the start and at the end or whenever. Um, you've got all your singers in, you've got your fades, your cross dissolves, everything. So you've got your, that's your video edited. So then we want to export it. So I'm going to go right up to the top here. This is our little share button and um, share the project event clip or timeline range. So I'm going to click on that and you've got some options here. Um, I'm going to go with master file. So I click on that and then it brings up these, um, this little box. So it's, it's named whatever I named it. Um, you can look at the settings. So format, um, video and audio, you could set it to be video only or audio only. Um, I wouldn't change the video codec. That is uh, ab ab above my pay grade and above your pay grade. And um, just leave it at whatever it's set as there. Um, they're all fine. You don't need to change any of that stuff. It tells you what size it's going to be. It tells you that it's going to be a dot mov. And I just hit next. And then I would name it. Tell tell um tell it where I want it to go. I would just hit on my desktop and save. I'm not going to do that now because it'll take a couple of minutes. Um, but when you do hit save, um, this this little circle with a tick in it, um, will come up as a little kind of task bar. And it will take you know depending on how many videos you have, um, it could take anything from a couple of minutes, you know, two or three minutes. Uh, if you had two or three singers, it could take you five minutes. If you have 40 singers, it could take you 20 minutes, half an hour. It just depends. That's going to depend on how HD your video footage is. It's going to depend on um, how fast your laptop is, what kind of processing power you have, that kind of thing. On my old laptop, it would easily take kind of 30, 40 minutes. And on my new one, it takes kind of between five and 15, we'll say. Um, so you need to leave Final Cut Pro open while it's processing it there. Um, and then it will automatically open um, in mine opens in QuickTime player. It'll depend on whatever you have your default um, video uh, player set as. So it might come up as VLC or, or um, something else, depending on what your default video um, player is on your laptop, but it'll, it'll automatically open it for you to watch it in a, in a video player uh, when it's done. Which is great so you know it's done because it will open it automatically in a different app um and at that point you can watch it check through make sure you're happy 
um and then you can then then you've then you've done you've edited your video um okay so i'm gonna close that down and i'm gonna jump back into this for a minute and i would like to talk about oop, don't want to open my bin i'm going to talk about organizing a virtual recording project they do take a little bit of um organization a little bit of uh a little bit of planning and preparation so if you're dealing with lots of people you need to be really organized like i said i think the biggest one that i did was 44 people um so a couple of things establish how people will get you their video that's going to depend on the group um, for the Theodore Byrne Ensemble, which is my professional, semi-professional vocal ensemble, I use Google Drive. I'll show you that in a couple of minutes. Um, I create two folders where the singers can upload their audio and their video separately. For Playlist, which is a community choir, um, mostly the singers just WhatsApp or email me their videos. We do have a, a, a choir website, like a member's website, and we do have a functionality there where people can upload their um, videos directly to that. So then I can just download them directly from that. But some people who are maybe don't use the website that much or maybe aren't as tech savvy as some of the others, they just WhatsApp me their videos directly. So then I would upload them to my Google Drive from my phone. Um, so yeah, find a way that works for you and your group. If you have a very tech savvy group, um, something like using Google Drive or having people upload it to a web website or something might work for you. If you have a slightly less tech savvy group and then something like WhatsApp might just work better. Um, I would use guide tracks. So for both of those ensembles, I send line tapes of me singing. So I would record like a demo of me singing that I would send to them for band projects. So if you're working with uh, musicians, it's always a good idea to use a click track or some sort of guide, instrumental guide track, um, and have each instrument instrumentalist add their part one at a time, uh, playing along with kind of whoever has already done theirs. That's just going to give you a really solid basis instead of everyone trying to kind of go ham by themselves and things being a little bit out of time. Um, provide resources that will help your participants out. So I always try and give people as many resources that I can to help them kind of succeed in 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 uh, being part of a project like this and feeling really good about it. So that could be line tapes, that could be demos, sheet music, charts, depending on if you're working with musicians, um, lyrics. Sometimes I'll record a conductor video. So if it's for a choir, I will literally record a video of me conducting the track. So they're watching me and responding to what I'm doing in real time. Um, set a deadline. If you want to get your project done, you need to set a deadline. For most of my things, I give them two weeks because I find that that's plenty of time to say you'll do it, forget you said you'll do it, remember that you said you do it, learn your music, record it and submit it. I also always give a couple of days. I don't tell people that, I'm, that I have a couple of days of buffer. You know, don't say, oh, you know, if someone says, I want you to do this video for me and I need it on the Friday. Don't set a deadline of Thursday for your singers. Set a deadline of Monday. So then that if just in case anybody does need an extra day or you need a little bit of extra editing time, just give yourself a few extra days. I always have a couple of safety days after the deadline. We never tell people, but it's always good to have it. Just if someone's like, oh, work was crazy or my laptop was broken or something, can I have an extra day? Yes, of course you can. You want as many people to be involved and you want people to have fun doing it and you want them to feel great about doing it. Um, so yeah, give people enough time to, to learn and to feel comfortable with submitting. Um, so this is some information that I send to my participants. I send this information to singers in the Theodore Byrne Ensemble. I don't send this to the likes of Playlist because they're all amateur singers. So they're all just using their phone, fine. Um, but this is what I send to the Theodore Byrne Ensemble. They're semi-professional and professional singers. So some people are using DAWs, recording software, that kind of thing. Some people are just using their phones, but this information goes out to everyone. So always say, please read the technical specifications or I will have to come back and ask you to re-record. Nobody wants that. So I say, please record audio as high a quality as you can. If you do have access to a microphone interface DAW, please use them. Uh, as this will ensure the highest quality of sound. 
try and leave your vocal as dry as possible. So encourage people not to add too many effects or reverb, that kind of thing. Um, you know, if, if one, one person sends you a really affected vocal, it's going to be harder for you to blend it. So just try and get everybody to send you raw, raw audio. If you are recording audio using a DAW, please record at 44.1 kilohertz. This is very important. Again, we were talking about defaults earlier on. Um, so that's just a little reminder. If you don't have access to recording equipment, just use your phone's camera audio. That's fine. Try and ensure there was there is as little ambient or background noise as possible. So if someone's got like air conditioner on or their windows open and there's cars going up and down the street, try and encourage people to find a quiet environment. Sometimes people think, oh, I'll stand in, you know, the hall. It's great. It sounds lovely and echoey. And then you get loads of echoey background noise. So just try and encourage people to record in a quiet place. Um, please record video at 30 frames per second, this standard video frame rate on an iPhone. If you are recording on another device, please check that it's at 30 frames per second. Again, I always say this, if it's not, I'm gonna come at, come, I'm gonna have to come back and ask you to record again. That usually gets the message across. Nobody wants to have to do this more than once. You know what I mean? Um, please record audio and video for the full duration of the video, including the clap at the beginning. So like I said, sometimes I include a countdown to a clap just to help line people up. Um, so this means you should press record on your video before you hit play on the line tapes and only stop the video when the full song has ended. So even, you know, if I was doing a song where the choir doesn't come in till 30 seconds in or something, I still visually, I want the option of having everyone in. Because sometimes you always get, you know, if you don't say that, you'll get someone who just presses, you know, who just records from the five seconds before their, you know, their singing bit starts. So that means that you have to start everyone at that point and you want, you know, you just want to have the option of visually having people in whenever you want them in. Um, please record videos against a neutral background where possible. You might want to say against a white background, against a, you know, plain black background, plain background, a dark background, again, whatever is going to work for your video. Um, you might want to say, you know, uh, make sure that your face is well lit or lit using natural light, don't sit in front of window, um, wear plain clothing, make sure you're centered in the frame, that kind of thing, that can all be up to you, that's going to depend on visually what you're looking for, wear a black top, you know, smile, don't smile, whatever, um, and please record videos in landscape format only. If you don't say that, you will have someone who records it in portrait. In fact, if you do say that, you will probably also have someone who records it in portrait, um, but sometimes there's things that can be done. And sometimes it doesn't really matter. Again, it's going to depend on what you're looking for. But these are the most important things. I find that when I say all of these things, the vast, vast, vast majority of people do adhere to them. Um, I'm just going to show you my Google Drive for one of these projects. So this is what my Google Drive looks like. I just did a collaboration with BellX1. Um, so this is the information that I give them. Now, this is, I've put this in more recently since the video has come out. That's just a clip that people could use on social media. But when I uploaded the this to send to people, I've got a list of who's singing what part. I've got sheet music for anyone who likes sheet music. I've got a full demo of the track, which is me singing all of the parts, just so people can kind of hear what the finished product's gonna sound like. I've got line tapes. So again, this is the, the track with each of the parts individually sung. So if you're singing alto two, you can hear just the alto two line by itself for learning purposes. And then I've created a choir audio files folder. So this is where all of the choir uploaded their audio and choir video files. You can see this is where all of the choir have uploaded their video files. So again, just give people as much information as you can. Um, let me show you one more. Um, so same thing, this was for a collaboration that I did with Karen Lavery. So I did sheet music for anyone who likes it. Again, a full choir demo of me singing it. This is a conductor video. So like I was saying, um, me conducting along to the video so the singers can watch and respond in real time. Um, so again, line tapes audio where everyone dropped their audio video i've since deleted those just to save space um but you get the idea 
Um, so that's kind of how I organize things. I just find the more organized you are, the more resources you can provide to people, um, the ultimately the more successful the project's gonna be. Um, if anyone has any questions about anything I demonstrated or didn't demonstrate, if anybody has ideas on alternative ways to do these, if anybody has suggestions of alternative software, anything like that, or you just wanna know more about any of my virtual projects, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Um, I have included, uh, which Charlene will somehow make available, um, a link to a Google Drive folder that has a little clip of me once again demonstrating um, adding videos and resizing them in Final Cut Pro. And I have also included this PowerPoint presentation as PDF. So that's just kind of covers everything that we've talked about. All of these videos will be hyperlinked. Um, I hope that is very helpful. And thank you very much for watching. Sure.